Hey, what is up? What is going on? This is Gumby, and welcome to another VOD review. And this time, we're going to look over the Clockwork Vendetta composition, how it works, why it works, and maybe some tier crafting on how to counter it. So, we begin with what the hell is the Clockwork Vendetta composition. Uh, you've got a, rare, a fairly static... Wait, the fuck? Fairly static composition, uh, comprised of a Zen, an Ana. Wait, let's clear that. Zen, Ana. These are your supports. A lot of uh, single target healing, but we'll go over that a little bit later. You've got for your tanks. You've got an Arissa. And a Roadhog. My handwriting is absurdly bad. And then for your DPS, quote unquote DPS, well, Engineer is eventually going to um, switch to him, but it's Torb. And then May. Now, initially, like, if you're gonna look at this and say, you only play ranked, or you're a bit on the lower side of the SR scale, i.e. like me, it's going to be a big question mark, right? Because, like, this, at face value, looks incredibly horrible. But the more you look at it, the more it actually makes sense and why it counters ghosts to a certain degree. So, first of all, you have a lot of CC, you have hook, from the Roadhog, which helps displace people and also isolate them. We've got Halt, which helps also displace people and at the same time, like whenever a GOAT composition will uh, would like to push into this into your team, uh, the Halt will just uh, negate the speed boost that's being used against you. So that kind of messes up their uh, advance, enough time for you to continue spam. To spam. To spam and hold, uh, well, as, as the name implies, uh, the, the ability name implies, to halt the advance. Torbjorn can go for off angles with the turret. Turret off. Angle. And the May, of course, has the freeze. Plus wall, which is very essential because uh, goats typically likes to be a death ball. So goats equals death ball. I don't know why I, I said like Goats is a death ball. Goats equals death, the D, death ball. So that means that it would rather stick together. So by having a May wall to cut off the goat's composition, maybe isolate a couple of people behind. Let's erase that. So let's say the goat's composition is blue. You can do this. Isolate something like, uh, like cut the goat's composition with the may wall like that. Then this is these three are free kills, and suddenly the entire the, the entire assault by the goat's team is completely hindered, or just stopped. And it's tracks completely. Uh, ah, God damn it! Notepad, please. There we go. So those are the strengths of the CV composition. You've got a lot of CC. CV strength. A lot of CC. And a way to um, what do you call this? A way to um, split the team. 
versus goats. It's versus goats. That's why no one really wants to run goats against this team, in fact, or against this composition because it's really, really rough. And as such, Crescent Jew opts for a different strategy. It's almost a mirror, but the idea is somewhat different. Uh, so you can see here that Crescent Jew opted to go for an Orisa. This is their main tank. They're, they only have one tank. Then triple DPS of Pharah. Uh, Hanzo and Ash. Then you have two healers in the form of Mercy to go with the Pharah. And Zen or Zenyara to go, well, just for added damage and more spam. So this is spam over. Shield Hanzo is just another sniper, so it's either he snipes or breaks shield. So he pressures the enemy Orisa. And then you have Ash, who nades, or who firebombs, that's probably a more accurate firebomb, over the shield, as well as sniping, sniping. And then you have Mercy, well, she just she just goes with the Pharaoh, right? So apart from that, you have Res. And damage boost. Hmm, double O, come on. Damage boost. Looks like an A, god damn it. Zen. Zen is again another source of spam. He kind of counters the May ult and the Molten Load from Torb, so it's a save. And a source of a debuff in the form of the Discord. I cannot write with a mouse. But anyway, so those are the strengths of... So those, those are the plans of this particular composition from Crescent Dew. And the way you implement it is Orisa is just going to be in front. So if this is Crescent Jew, this is your Orisa. And then the rest of your team is probably going to be above or around, just trying to go for an off angle. So maybe you have a Hanzo here. Ash is going to come from here. Your Zen is going to be here, trying to spam. Your Pharah is going to be above. Your Mercy going to be off angling the shield. And of course, the Risa is going to spam from the front, preventing the side of the Clockwork Vendetta from actually setting up properly. So, Clockwork is over here. There's a lot of spam being put on to their shield. Sometimes not even on their shield, just their backline, because Farah can just spam from above. Ash can also nade from above. Hanzo can just negate by getting the proper angle. So it's really difficult for uh, Clockwork Vendetta to get a setup. Especially if their composition is really mobile, which it is. So see here, lots of spam being shot. And the reason why that works also is because, again, this, unlike ghost compositions, there's not really a lot of save for your tanks. There's no bubble to negate, let's say, the Discord Orb or the Firebomb, the burning effect from Ash's Grenade. There's also no Diva Matrix to, like, 
prevent that from happening. <clears throat> so it's so Crescent Dew actually did their homework, and this is the actual proper counter. Well, I'm I'm gonna go and say that it's one of the proper counters to this uh, composition by Clockwork Vendetta. I don't think it is necessarily the best or the only one. See, before Clockwork Vendetta can properly set up, there's already picks, Hanzo is already flanking, Paris already spamming over the shield. Uh, at this point, if I were Clockwork Vendetta, I would, I would rather switch, but it seems like they have trained for this particular composition on this map, or shall I say every single map, so there you go. So, um, typically what Clockwork Vendetta wants to do with their composition is they want to stick as a team, as a whole. Well, this is against Ghosts, of course. Generally speaking. Okay, so Urs is going to be here. This is Clockwork Vendetta. Uh, your Roadhog is going to be just spamming shield with Urissa. And then you have a Mei will also try to spam. This is assuming that they're not yet set up. But uh, the Mei is kind of flanking. He's not. She's not too far away. She's just off angling. And then waiting. Uh, and then waiting for someone to come close and then wall them off. Like so. This is against goats. So they wall him off. And then the Torbjorn will set himself up somewhere at the other flank with a turret so let's just draw a turret and not fail that's close enough i guess so he's gonna flank from the from the side with a turret and continue st to spam maybe he's going to try and spam maybe even come close and freeze one of these targets but torbjorn is going to flank and spam to get his ult as well as be a general nuisance, especially if you're really accurate with Torbjorn. If in this situation you did get a successful wall, Torb should be close enough to advance towards the enemy team and that then help clean up. Then after that, they get to the point, they set up here, or maybe even closer. Mm, nah, if it's Ghost, they can flank, right? So they're probably gonna set up there. Torbjorn is likely going to take the high ground with a turret because it's really difficult, so Torbjorn is going to be here. May is likely going to be flanking from the side, so the May is going to be there. Or even in there. And then the Roadhog and Arissa are just going to chill right here, looking for hooks. Halt combo, it works. But in this situation, wherein Crescent Jew has a really uh, mobile composition, except for the Orisa and the Zen. What you want your Roadhog to do, your Mo uh, in this case Moose, your Moose, what? Yes, you, you need to get your own Moose and your own team. Um, what you want to do as your Roadhog in this situation is to just go and flank and get a pick off. Like, the Roadhog will flank. Flanks versus three or four DPS. Reason being is that Roadhog, Roadhog's initial or normal uh, job is to pressure shield. And maybe, and maybe get a pick off. But in this scenario, since there's no real shield to pressure much, or even if they do pressure, like, there is a shield here, it won't really do much. So instead, the Roadhog flanks and gets a kill. And then forces the Mercy to commit a res. Which then leaves the rest of the team very vulnerable, so that means that the rest of the CV composition can advance. 
and then take space. Advance and take space. I really cannot write with the friggin' mouse. Yeah, I'm just gonna give up on that. And use the notepad because I am a weakling. Okay. So, CV strength versus 3 or 4 DPS is Roadhog Flank. Or rather, it's not really the strength, but the. Uh, Standard operating procedure. Road hog flanks. Gets kill. Uh, the May stays with Orissa and helps push forward. Extend that a little bit. Uh, the Torbjorn goes for also a flank, because again, flank, because uh, their firepower doesn't really need to be concentrated in the middle, so it benefits the Torb if he can go around with his turret and flank. It also distracts the enemy team, perhaps they will not notice the Roadhog doing, going to for, for the flank kill. Um, Erisa just spams and moves forward with shield whenever possible mm, and Diana Diana looks for sleep darts and biotics whenever possible as well That's the SOP for 3 DPS. Crescent Jew is of course not gonna... But again, this is a rather difficult thing to do because Torbjorn is not exactly very mobile. Even though he does have an ability to uh, absorb more damage. Get more health and absorb more damage. And Mei, Mei is also not very mobile. Granted that she's not really flanking in this uh, particular scenario, but she's very vulnerable to just getting sniped from the sides, or from the top, or being spammed from the top. Basically, Crescent Jew has their number with this composition. As you can see, Hanzo is on the top left, <coughs> spamming his arrows, already has the ult. Farrak is not going to be dealt with effectively. The Torbjorn tries to flank with a f turret, but is not very successful. Wow, th that was not a kill. That is very unfortunate. It's a nice dink. They use the um Okay, they use that because it was the last fight. Bob is also very easy to acquire because again there's nothing to negate the firebomb. And typically when when the C V composition moves out it moves out as a whole. Oops. C V oh, god damn it. C V moves as unit and that is one of their strengths one of their weaknesses as well because Anna grenades are going to be very valuable in response I guess the the other reason why they have an Anna is to better pressure the Pharah because a discord orb into two shots from the Anna should kill the Pharah even with healing. Doesn't really take much. That's a really nice pickoff from Moose. He 
punishes the Hanzo for constantly peeking, trying to spam. Also, you want to take out the turret immediately because that's one very major source of DPS and it's perfectly accurate from a very long range and does very decent damage. So you definitely want to take it out as soon as possible. That's why one of the first things that uh, the Farah does is to take it out and then spam the enemy team. See that? <clears throat> the turret is already dead. Unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize on it quite. They're making it even. So if you're if you're Crescent Dew, you want to play this slow and continue to spam. So in this scenario, play slow. Continue spam. Because Again, you got two pickoffs. It's uh, at this point, I think it's even. One, two, one, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty even. They still have a shield. A shield. But you've got incredibly mobile heroes anyway, so you can just negate that shield by right positioning. Okay, the dragon splits them off. Fire goes for the back line. Does get the turret, which is still value, but pickoff would have been much better. Ooh, <clears throat> the May. So how how should have you how should have how should they have played this? Uh, what else do they have? They have Transcendence. Hmm. So they, she keeps spamming. The wrist is underneath. As is the Twerb. Ah, uh, it's really unfortunate. But where was the Mercy then? He's not being healed. There it is now. And she's gone. She's back. Oh, she didn't heal in time. <coughs> Yeah. I think you still survive that. Another thing is, I think... You fly. Oh. Wait, you did try to fly. Okay. I think you should... She should have started flying. At this point. Like, really high up. And then started spamming. There was no real turret. The Torbjorn already used this turret, so that means it's on cooldown. <clears throat> so by flying much higher initially. But then again there's that roof. I keep forgetting about that thing. So how could have you played this differently, Crescent Jew? I don't mind I don't mind I don't mind this Farah actually going for the back lines even more. Because this uh this Sarissa is pretty much trapped but she's in a very good hiding spot over there. The shield is going to make it really impossible for the spam to be consistent unless the Farah just commits. Another another way, instead of going through this window, is to go all the way around. Because you know that the, the Torbjorn is now here, so likely the turret is going to be somewhere inside. Which doesn't really ha have an angle. So you're still kind of safe. 
You barrage from main. Go around from here, then barrage from main. Barrage. Kill everything here. Including the Ana. Granted, it's a bit it's a bit risky because there's still a road hog that's like poking around, but <clears throat> Okay. I think I think the team communicates as well that the Roadhog is inside. Yeah. Yeah, they, they kinda know that the Roadhog is is there. So I think that would have been a better play. If they went all the way around and then barraged. Uh, you're you're still under risk of the Anna sleep darting you, but hey. The good thing though is that they still have this barrage for this next fight. Okay, turret is again gone. Not less de DPS available. <clears throat> no longer have a road hog. Farah gets instantly dinked. Well, that wasn't a dink, but she gets killed, regardless. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure why he pushed. Like, okay. Kill the Pharaoh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I understand. He was gonna go for the, uh... For this. For the ult. But then, if that's the case, why not just throw it over here, right? So you move over here as May. And then, throw it over here this particular spot because that will cover this area which makes it really difficult for present Jew to um to advance they have to go all the way around or at least to the next door hmm. strange Hanzo gets a nice flank that's a splitting arrow or a splitting dragon the rest of the Clockwork Vendetta can't go in, and this becomes a problem because Clockwork Vendetta's composition favors being able to take the point and not have to move much. But the moment that they're displaced, it's a little bit more difficult to actually take it back. Good off angle. Good firebomb. Already has the bob. <clears throat> Nice pull into snipe. And the good thing about this is that at this point, Crescent G is still not committing any ults. Granted that uh, Clockwork Vendetta is not uh, committing any ults themselves, but it's not like they are in any position to do so. Like, uh, Crescent G is not giving them that opportunity. Spam, spam, spam. Ult and load goes out. But since this composition is really, really split and the point is very, very big, they don't really have to fear the, the molten load that much. Like, this fire is just flying away. Plus, um, the molten, molten load, as I like to call it, is effective. It's more effective if. The molten load. I'll call that. I'll call it that because I have no idea what it's actually called. Molten load. More effective. When you have the point. Why is that? Well, the reason being is that uh, the enemy team, especially Crescent Juice composition, has to go through some certain avenues, like say these two uh, cubbies here, or from main, 
main for them is over here, or f God forbid, over here at the the high ground, to high ground windows. So as a Torb who has control of the point, all you have to do is spread the molten load over here, over here, over here, over here, and that's it. That's like the push from Clockwork from Crescent Jew is just done. There's nothing that they can do about it. But in this scenario, since Cl uh, Crescent Jew has the uh, the control of the point, it's a lot more difficult. Like, you have to spread that molten load all over the place for it to be effective. And against mobile heroes, that's not gonna- that's gonna be a tall ask. The Transcendence has to be committed, they have to win this fight. They did get a pick off on the Ash, but they have yet to flip the point. And the only people alive are the Roadhog. And this Torbjorn, Torbjorn gets a kill on the Hanzo, but gets picked off by the Zen. And they were able to burst down the Roadhog as well. <coughs> Switches are made so that they can stall for as long as possible and maybe get a pick off so that they can stabilize. Doesn't get the Mercy, the rest goes off. No one else is on the point. GGCD. Okay, so let's move on to Numbani, where they both teams pretty much use the exact same composition. Theory is still the exact same. Crescent Jew has a composition that will spam the Living Daylights out of Minimi's shield, uh, denying them any form of point presence. And then Clockwork Vendetta is just going. To... Wait, sorry. Clockwork Vendetta needs to go to the point, but to prevent that from happening, Crescent Jew is just going to try and spam them. Until they gave up. So, where do they position themselves? Larissa is top left. Okay. But this time... Okay, Clockwork Vendetta has a variation. So... Let's break that up. CV variation, it seems like... They do this for... Hybrid. For Hybrid. And it's... Mercy. Larissa. Uh, that's a Torb, Hanzo, a May, and a Roadhog. So, again, the thing that we will notice is that, or the most obvious I guess is, the healing output for this one is really low. Or hot. Is that right? Or is it heal per second? HPS. I guess that's uh it's a better it's a better acronym. The less I need to write the better. HPS is HPS is low. Heals per second is low because you only have a mercy. But then again you don't really need a lot of healing because Torb to a degree can heal himself by popping the molten core. Uh, Hanzo is highly mobile and is going to be in your backline, so this does not require healing. Does not require much heal. The May can heal herself. Self. Heal. The Roadhog can also do that. The Rissa is just there to spam anyway, so... Uh, kind of the same like 
Uh, Ken is the same with your Hanzo, she doesn't really need that much help. Torbjorn is going to be roaming, so he should and has has armor gain. So doesn't really need <clears throat> doesn't really need heals immediately. Narissa doesn't really need heals immediately. So you can you can be a little bit greedy and go for a one healer deal. Um so why would you run this instead of the original? Um the Hanzo can okay, so the Hanzo has the ability to take advantage of the high ground. She this can climb climb and snipe. So the moment that they that Clockwork Vendetta are able to take a little bit more control of or a little bit more space, the Hanzo will just go up. And then starts pressuring or spamming from above. Apart from that, it's another flanker. Zen is not really that well okay, Zen is a very quiet flanker, he doesn't have footsteps, but I mean, the damage output for Hanzo is a lot greater than Zen. The proper hands. Without the Discord Orb. Other reason is, it's another way of breaking Crescent Jew's shield. Not that Crescent Jew is particularly concerned about it, because again, the risk is just there for point presence and additional spam. I don't think if she goes down, then that's fantastic. That means that Clockwork Vendetta has sunk so much damage into it that your mercy can probably just go res when the the coast is clear, and it clears up the um, it kind of keeps your the heat off of your DPSs, your Crescent Jew. Moose is going for a flank. He's going to try and pick someone off. Because this... Okay. The Ash was killed off last fight. And uh, Crescent Juice um, composition is not really great at peeling. Or at least escorting people back to the point. They don't really want to move. Same as the Clockwork Vendetta composition. Okay, what happened there? A lot of things happened that entire th moment. So Moose tries to go for a pickoff, doesn't quite get it. The Farad dies. Goes for a res. This is a very strange decision from Crescent Juice Mercy. Why would you res? I guess you. No, you don't have Val. What the hell? It's a good thing that she didn't get punished immediately, but... Attention was split. Successfully split by Moose. Does get killed, but doesn't really matter. They get the point. Hanzo goods forward, probably Sonics, just so that they know exactly where they're going to be coming from. Maybe get a pick off early, so that the fight is to their favor. Molten load goes out, but the street is really wide, so... I mean, Crescent Jew's... Probably the only thing about that is that Crescent Jew cannot touch the payload immediately, but I don't think they mind. Like, they, I don't think Crescent Jew minds giving them a little bit more space, because if Crescent Jew can 
eliminate Clockwork Vendetta right here, it's going to be very difficult for CV to just retake the payload again. CD did have to expend quite a bit of ultimates to that, and Clockwork Vendetta did not. Granted that Crescent Jew will have their ultimates much quicker. Oh, okay. I didn't see that switch, but yeah. Widowmaker switch just for the Pharaoh and the Mercy. Don't think, don't think they expected it. Otherwise... Okay, Chara keeps spamming. Yeah, I don't think they expected that. Because if they did, uh, Hanzo and, um, what do you call this, Ash would be pressuring this Widow a lot harder. Especially if the position is just there. So this is a lost fight, definitely. There's no way that they stall this unless they commit Bob. Which I doubt they'll ever do. A bit dangerous to do that because they're now staggered. But again, um, I don't think CD mines as well as much. I would love for this fair, for this uh, Widowmaker to... Well, then again, it's very dangerous for him to go above. There's not really a lot of other avenues for him to snipe. Probably will switch soon enough. I would rather have him be... Uh, what do you call this? A Hanzo again? <clears throat> then again... The moment that they are able to round this corner, eh, the avenues for attack for Widowmaker becomes much greater. So, maybe if they got stopped, he would have switched, but... Molten Load is able to zone out the rest of the enemy team. That's pretty much why they win. Clockwork Vendetta is of course going to run the exact same thing. This time on defense. Uh, again, still a single healer. Same, same reasoning. You don't really need a lot of heals to keep this composition alive. And it's very difficult for anybody to actually guard or prevent a res because they're likely going to be playing at high ground and in a position where in it's really difficult to just walk over and you know, like dive or camp so moose is positioning himself over here with the may i think that's a may i'm gonna go ahead and say that's a may this is over here the roadhog it's over here this platform the idea is that he's expecting, say, a Hanzo or an Ash to go to the other side, push from main, from above, and that's his opportunity to hook, get a pickoff. And it's going to be a very dangerous res for the Mercy from CD. Almost a good pull. That's a better hook. Gonna look and try to pressure this Pharah whenever possible. That's a really nice hook by him. This push is basically over. <clears throat> Too many bodies are dead from the side of Crescent Jew.
they go above, there's a rotation to... Yeah, they just rotate below. Okay, the wall was too soon, I think. If we go look at that again... So, CV already suspects it's going to be a top push. It goes down. Okay, so they're expecting some form of rotation to the to the bottom, but it never really happens. I I mean that's the only reason why they would commit that wall. I'm I'm, uh, unless they really just fucked up. The committal of the um the two cooldowns makes it very difficult for the. CV Orissa to keep the shield up, gets pressured out and finally killed. Alright, and this is an easy take for Crescent Jew. Okay, CV now has a uh, Widowmaker. Just to contest this fire because she is very much a problem, especially in these more open maps. Roadhog is just waiting inside. I think she already knew that. Yep. She didn't before, she does now. Uh, Crescent Jew switches to a Widow of their own instead of an Ash, just to contest the enemy Widow. It's a really good dragon. It was it was supposed to split them off, but they didn't really expect it, so I, they just got trampled by the dragon. They stuck behind enemy lines. They probably won't push. Push the May, that is. Oh, you need to peel for Orissa. Okay, Transcendent goes out in response to the May ult. May is about to die, saves herself by another ice block. Trading quite a bit, but <clears throat> not enough. Dissuade Crescent Jew. Alright. They will likely push forward. Uh, Sky Ripa is going to be on payload duty. You have Bongos and Molten Load. They'll probably try to combo it with Pool Hog, which is also now available. Or at least force it, at least use it to force out. Some more ultimates from Crescent Jew or stop them from completely pushing and snowballing. Dragon is out. Really nice dragon. Splits the enemy team. Cleanup is the only thing left. Hanzo gets picked off, unfortunately. But they have the res, so it doesn't matter. So if you're CV, uh, again, I think you should have switched. Because it's really difficult to contest this now. Even with ults. Because you're basically being stuffed inside your own spawn. There's just so much spam. And they don't even need to commit that much because... Or at least they don't have to... Uh, Put themselves out of position because there's literally just two exit points for Clockwork Vendetta to get to the point.
CV trying to think of where they should go. Splits off. There's a May, I think, it's trying to go down there. Chris is already dead. Oh, never mind. Arisa was there. So I guess the plan was to for the main team, for Arisa and company, to go all the way around. Maybe take this high ground. But I would rather have this particular uh, movement. And then Roadhog goes from main. Because this is the distraction. I don't know why I put a dot on that when everything's capitalized, but alright. Roadhog goes through main, underneath, and maybe gets a pickoff. Lock. Plus pick off. Because likely CD is going to be paying attention to this instead of this. And maybe Moose will get lucky and grab someone. Also, interestingly enough, Crescent Jew is not opting for the Ash this time. Going for a Junkrat, so it's double projectile spam into... Well, actually triple. Projectile spam because Hanzo is also projectile. His arrows are not hit scan. They're not going to be as consistent from long range. Unless you were talking about a really mobile target. So, CV Orissa is really stuffed over there. Can't really move much. If at all, unless the May tries to wall off. Rotation down main. Dragon goes out, tries to split the team. Is somewhat successful. But for the most part, it's still very much a unit. And since uh, the jump is also a factor, that means that like he's just free to spam from a really safe place from above. Doesn't have to worry about anything. Especially if they're walking through main. Like all the jump has to do is like stand maybe even just here and then spam. Maybe even further back. Then just chuck. Nades all over this particular area and make dead people, or at least make it such that their uh, their single heal mercy is really getting punished. Because single uh, mercy is good at single target healing, so the moment that there's a lot of damage being splashed amongst your team, you're kind of screwed. They don't want to. They don't really want to push forward. Just because there's there's just too much pressure on every single one of them. At low health. So I guess that's another way to um that's another thing that you can consider encountering the C V composition. Possible counters. You have things that can spam over shield, or heroes that can spam over shield. Status effect, i.e., biotic grenade, and grenade, and dynamite. Ash Dynamite. Heroes that can also spam shield. Such as Orisa herself. Uh, you can also opt for a Bastion, but I, 
Bastion only against... Uh, I guess this is just for defense or for... Uh, pure payload maps wherein you get control of um, the payload immediately. See how this, this plays out, the second attack. So they're just spamming. Unfortunately, Hanzo already dies because, again, Moose is on the roam, on the flanks, trying to get for picks. I'm not 100% sure why the, the Mei is here, but I guess it's just to add pressure so, so that she can do that. So the idea is your Roadhog and your Mei are flanking close so that the Mei can push up like this and then maybe freeze the Rissa and stop the push from happening from Crescent Jew, but it's not enough. That's an unfortunate disjoint on the hook. No hook there. Somewhat ambitious, especially since uh, it is a high ground. Moose tries to get a pick, but again, it's too late. He also tries to contest, but again, it's uh, it's a 1v5. It's really difficult. So, so far, what do we know? What do we know about uh, Clockwork Vendetta? Vendetta's uh, composition. TV comp weaknesses. No DM. No DM. Because there's no D.Va. There's no bubble. So... There's... It's actually fairly prone to spam. Highly mobile. Private Hawkins, Gumby, you're my hero. Thank you, Hawkins. Also, welcome to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. Highly immobile, prone to spam, because they also tend to group up. Uh, what else? Doesn't really do... I miss you, baby. Uh, I miss you too, man. How's life been so far? Hawkins, uh, CV, composition weaknesses, no bubble, no highly prone, spam, uh, heal output isn't really that high, especially with an Ana, it's mostly single target heal, so heals are mostly single target, this is because it's usually Ana, or Mercy, and then a Zen. So definitely, if you spam them, it's going to be very much value. Uh, yeah. So CV composition, possible counters. So heroes that can spam over shield is definitely a thing. Status uh, heroes that can inflict status debuffs. Like the Biotic Grenade, Ash Dynamite. Those are definitely a thing. Uh, since you're going to go for if you're going to go for um what do you call this? Triple DPS, maybe you can go with an Ana. So it's also so sleep darts are good. I'm just gonna say that. Uh, sleep darts are good. Span the shield is pretty good as well. But what else? What else can you do? 
Oh yeah, off angling is incredibly powerful. Off angling with snipers is also very powerful because uh, well, your Zen, Zen can output enough damage so that your snipers are not going to be inclined to snipe, so Zen can also can output either, they, he can get a kill outright on a sniper, or just output enough damage so that they back off. This is versus two snipers or more. The same can be said for May. May, if her right clicks are good, uh, can actually dissuade a bunch of snipers. Anna, not so much. Though a sleep dart from the CV comps Anna can be problematic too for a sniper. So what else can you can you use against the CV composition? Dive is most certainly not the way to go because Genji just gets frozen. Reaper also gets frozen. He just gets shoot away even if he has Wraith. If he does raid away, then you know, that's that's your push over. You don't really output enough damage. So, I think this is basically basically uh, it versus roaming roadhog. So, with this in mind, what is your what is another team composition that you can use? To defeat the CV. So theoretical. Alternative. Tiv. God damn it, I can't spell. Versus Clockwork. Why is your name so long? Clockwork Vendetta. Alright, so you want something that is somewhat mobile. Also, I forgot. Another thing that's really good against it, since they're all clustered up, EMP. <laughs> EMP is pretty good. Uh, the moment they get EMP'd, what do you do? You just take free spam. Alright. So one scenario is you go... Uh, three sniper dive. By this I mean you still have dive tanks. So you've got Winston, Winston, Diva. Oh wait, you don't have a Diva. God damn it! You just have a Winston. Wait, this might be problematic then, because the Winston just dies. Eh. Yeah, okay. So it's looking more and more that Orisa is the choice, the weapon of choice versus uh, Clockwork Vendetta. I guess it's also dependent on the map. So let's say that this is... Let's say that it's Koth. On... On... King of the Hill. So that's an awesome beard. Right there. Anyway. Uh, on Koth. So they want to be able to control the point immediately. You want to prevent that from happening by stuffing them inside a choke. So how do you do that? You can go Winston. The Winston's job is just to control the choke and then jump out immediately the moment he's being pressured. At which point 
uh, a bunch of other uh, his team, the DPSs will try and pressure from there. So you want since it's cost, there's a lot of moving space. Okay, Farup is in consideration. Farah, so de definitely you're going to have a mercy. You can also go for... You want something that can flank. Flank, but not have to go close, because you're going to be frozen by the May. So a sniper like Ash who also has the dynamite. And then... Hanzo, because Hanzo can spam and also snipe at the same time. So basically, we're just taking the uh, Crescent Jew mo uh, Crescent Jew composition and modifying it a bit with a Winston. But instead of of a Zen, we will have an Anna, because the moment that the so these guys, so these. Four, yes, including the Mercy, are going to be on shield breaking duty. Shield break. Shield break. Uh, what else? Shield break and pick off. Duty. Winston is just there to apply pressure, or at least prevent them from, from just walking forward. By, uh, by, basically choking them in a, a small space and forcing them there. Although this is still very difficult, I feel, for a Winston. Looks like an Arisa is going to be the right call. But I don't wanna copy I don't wanna copy Resident Juice composition exactly. I wanna I wanna have something on my own of my own. And then the moment that the shield breaks, that's where the Ana goes in. For the biotic grenade. Dash also goes for the um, for the dynamite. The moment the shield break happens, dynamite. There you go. I think that should work. Then after after that, it should be just positioning, like the pharaoh will fly above. So positioning is going to be. Why did I erase everything? Anyway. So let's say... Your Winston is going to be off angling, hopefully from a high angle, from a safe place. So Winston. This is... CV. So it's going to advance through here. You're going to be off angling, so you're going to be blocking as Winston. This particular choke, so this is choke. Jumping away whenever necessary. And then your Farah. The Farah will apply pressure from above. Along with the Mercy, but we're not, that's like a given. And then. The Hanzo is probably going to go... Actually, the Anna is going to be line of sight of the Winston. First and foremost, this should be line of sight. The idea being that if the Winston starts getting pressured, or the, the CV comp starts going after the Winston... So, let's say they go after the Winston, the Anna will need. I Anna will either need 
or sleep. And then your Ash, your Ash and your Hanzo are going to take two different angles. Hopefully ones that can effectively spam and as for the Ash specifically, you can Dynamite. So the moment that they advance towards the Winston, Dynamite. Now, should, in the scenario we're in the Roadhog flanks, or uh, roams, that's why the Ana has to look out for them. Roadhog flank equals Ana sleep. Sleep dart. And the moment that this happens, the team needs to increase pressure. Enemy team. This is, of, all, of course, just assuming that we're fighting against a Clockwork Vendetta's composition. Otherwise, you, you run goats or something else. So, Roadhog Flag, you go Sleep Dart. After the Sleep Dart connects, you go for an increased pressure in the enemy team. You break their shield, you go for a nade, go for a pickoff. You need, we need to quickly finish them off while the Roadhog is asleep. Preferably, we also leave the Roadhog, well, asleep, of course, but also in a position wherein it's really far from our team. But of course, this also assumes that we also have the points. But more and more, I'm more inclined to just running Crescent Jew's composition of Orisa. Orisa 3 DPS. But instead of instead of instead of um, Zen placed with Anna. Because if you're um, the Zen, the Zen's purpose is twofold, I guess. Well, threefold. Again, Discord. Discord. I guess four. I guess you have four different uses for a uh, for Zen. There's also long range healing. But the Zen is also there for the Molten Load. To counter it with the Transcendence as well as the Blizzard. That's why I think Zen is in that composition. Which is fine, because the moment that Clockwork Vendetta is able to take control of the point, and then they just use their Molten Load or May Ult, then you're kind of screwed, right? Your team needs to split up if you are playing triple DPS, and your Aris is just fucked. But if you can dissuade the CV composition using the Ananade, good biotic grenade. It should, it should prevent them from advancing even further, or perhaps even force them to split up. It'll force the Clockwork Vendetta composition to split up a little bit, and play more defensive. That means we can play more aggressive. Yeah, this is something that you can try. So, triple DPS, well, exact same from Crescent Jew. Maybe you can experiment with Sombra? 
So the idea is that if the Roadhog flanks, but then again, would the Roadhog flank in in response to a Sombra? Maybe he will. Because he knows that um, unless we can take so much space, but yeah, I just want to try triple DPS with a Sombra. The other DPSs are going to be uh, heroes that can snipe or can spam or both, like Hanzo. Uh, and then on defense, you can probably have a variation wherein you have a Bastion. Because that's so much forward fire. It'll break the Arisa shield before she can even do anything. Of course, if you run this, it's incredibly prone to the enemy team just switching. So, Bastion, if, if Bastion is prone to counter swap on defense. Swap. Mm. Another option is to sniper dive. Dive. Wherein you have uh, Winston. Diva. Um, what support would you like? But first, the snipers, I guess. We can go for Hanzo, Widow, and then your supports are going to be what? Well, Mercy, because you want to take advantage of both the damage boost to the snipers, as well as the ability to for the Mercy to fly to either sniper for safety. And then... You can also go triple sniper, but this is really difficult if it's just one healer and it's a D.Va. Um, Zenyatta's not bad. Because again, you have an ult that can save your team from Molten Load and Blizzard. To a certain degree, road, uh, Whole Hog and... I guess the Bongos you can just kite. Yeah. Pressure the shield so much that you can destroy the Bongos. Um... So again, this is these two will off angle. These two will try to pressure the front, gain space. They can't really dive, per se. They need to uh, take a choke uh, by or retaining the space by taking choke. And cycling. Meaning to say that first the Winston goes in, jumps out, Diva goes in, starts pressuring, jumps out, Winston goes in, jumps out, over and over and over again. And at least until the Hanzo and the with the Widowmaker are in position to get a snipe. And then Zen just spams from afar, tries to break shield, along with the Hanzo. But of course, these three are going to be in different angles. Mercy is just going to damage boots as much as possible. And then fly to and fro the snipers and the main tanks. 
yeah, that's one. That's one option. Another option is instead of well, you still retain your two snipers, but instead of a dive, you just use a simple push tank composition. So that's Ryan. I mean, the Ryan's job is really sad. You're just a triangle man. You're just walking with your shield up. Um. Diva, because you want to be able to eat the spam and the halt, so that your rank can push forward, and then same snipers, exact same sniper. So widow. I mean, depending on your preference in the map, you can also have Ash, but the standard, I guess, is this for immediate pickoffs. And then, since this is the composition, perhaps we will benefit from having a Moira. Moira is an option. Or an Anna. Because the moment that the the two main tanks or the two tanks are able to close distance, the Anna can nade. And the Moira I'm just saying that because well it is two very slow tanks, but could be wrong. Another option is Zen. Because again, Discord Orb is really powerful despite the nerf. And of course, a Mercy. Wait, actually, no. The Mercy is not as great. And the reason being that your, your Rhine is really sad if there's no Lucio. So you actually need a Lucio for this composition. Because. He will just take so much spam, and the D.Va will not be able to negate it. There's only so much DM that the D.Va can commit, so that the Rhine can actually get close. But this is a little bit riskier because of Mei. Mei can wall them off. But yeah, um, so far, I'm liking the Crescent Dew composition. Maybe the only options that I... Variations I will do is Anna, Anna plus Sombra, or Anna and, and then uh, a composition that will run Anna and a composition that will run Sombra, or Sombra rather, because I really want to take advantage of the fact that they are really prone to Anna nades, and that they have a tendency to just clump up together, especially when they're moving. Taking position, but apart from that, I think that is my brainstorming session over. I will end the vod right here. Thank you for watching. I will take a short break. When we come back, I'll just chill and play Ace Combat Seven.